now today at the age of 66, I kind of understand better why that is. Taking Intermounting Flame first, Hendrix had died maybe about a year or two years earlier. There was a void. Zeppelin was on its way out. There was this huge chasm of, of music that was missing. Joplin had died. A lot of, a lot of great musicians had just come and, and just gone, you know? And there was a lot of change still going on. Uh, right around then, well, maybe four years prior to us making this record, Miles came up with uh, a combination of tunes um, that really, with the title on, on a record that really kind of signified where everything was going. It was called ESP. You had Charles Lloyd. You had you had Keith and and Dijonette in the band with Charles. You had a lot of people searching for that extra dimension, you know. And along we come, and we fill this gap. It's almost like a like a like a corkscrew stop, you know, or in, in, or in a dike, you know, because we didn't last long. That not that band, um, and maybe it was correct. Uh, people like I mean, not just us, but Tommy Bolin. Um, there were a lot of musicians who just came and went and filled the gap, stuffed it with some kind of musical glue, and then died because it was necessary. And we're talking about uh, a band that lasted two and a half years and just exploded um, because no one could get along uh, concept-wise, highly insecure. Not only us, bands like Dreams, uh, Bill Chase, uh, there was a lot of bands that just didn't last at the test of time because there was too much going on, too much information happening, too many people going in, the, in different directions individually. Actually, I wanted to make this record for my folks. I had no idea that I was making anything that would be of any that anyone would even buy, except for me. Um, when I and so I decided to, because I'd had this experience working with people like um, with James Brown before and all, and Kenny Burrell and all these other guys. Why not make kind of a groove album based on the fact that. Billy Cobham's known to play with this crazy band that played a million notes per bar called the Maha, Mahavishnu Orchestra. I thought that could be a selling point. I didn't really think about it past that, quite honestly. And so I was looking to try to find a way to make a recording that would get me some concerts and performances uh, for anything from, from uh, weddings for in a Polish band to just something that said, oh, this is what I do, and, I, and also I can play for your wedding, and not thinking that anything would happen. To the point, to drive, this home, drive home this idea, I really didn't know I had a hit record until six months later because kept, people kept telling me, hey, that's a good record. And I would go to a recording session, I go, which one? Because I mean, I was working with Freddie Hubbard, I was recording with George Benson, I was working on projects with Mill Jackson. I didn't know which record, and then it, Finally, the, 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 the um, producer, or the a and the guy head of a and at Atlantic Records said, you know, we need to find you a manager, an agent. This record's selling, man. I'm saying, my record? Okay, what do you mean, like 10,000 10, or something? Said, what, are you kidding me? You know, by, by this time, it's like six months down the road and we've got like 250,000 records sold and I'm going, is that right? Well, what does that mean? You know, how is that? I had no idea. You know, then when it hit me that I had to put together a band, where did I go? I went to all the guys I knew from my old band that I was just a member of, which is Dreams. So I, that's how I ended up again with Randy and Abercrombie and Michael and Gr Gralnick, you know. 
And so Dreams became the Billy Collin band for a while. It was crazy, you know. When you don't understand, especially in this day, who the artist is and how that person has come to creating information of this sort, of this nature, in this particular way, based on who, where he's come from, uh, traveled history from, from the way back to the beginning to current events. Uh, this is what's uh, this is what I call a sonic mirror of the individual. Um, and without this history, there's no chance really to express yourself except in monotones. If all you have is uh, who you are based on, on now, and it's like baby going da 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 because there's nothing else you don't know anything else. As soon as you hear mom go da da, then baby goes da da. Okay, because listening and the history is building. Okay, music absolutely the reflection of this. You know, without music, we're we're only monotonal. We're monochromatic, even. You know, there's no chance for anything else. First time I saw a palindrome as a, a literal paragraph, it had to do with life in its most negative form. And it read negative, negative, negative until the very last word. And the beauty of it all was when you read, and that was from left to right, when you read from right to left, it went back up, oh, totally positive. Same words. And once I understood what a palindrome was, like a, a, one ch word on my album, is, it's a Finnish palindrome. It's called Saipokivikapias, which is like, oh, come on, Finland. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's spelled S-A-U-P-P-U-A-K-I-V-I-K-A-U-P-I-A-S. And if you send it, spell it the opposite direction, it's the same thing. And here, it's about my music from the past being brought to the present in, in terms of being recreated, uh, regenerated, uh, and matched up with how and reflect how I am now as opposed to how I was back in the days when I wrote it. For instance, A Day's Grace, I performed and I wrote in 1978-79 performed it in 1980 with Don Gralnick on a recording, Barry Finnerty, and I never played it again. I just didn't know where to go with it until two years ago, or say 2010. Then it made sense because I had the right people in the band, and I had, I had a better understanding uh, of what I could do compositionally with something like this, and I, it, I wanted to do it. Uh, that's one piece. Mirage is another piece. Uh, I recorded 
15 years ago, it was fine. But with these people that I have now, it had a different personality. Uh, Spectrum, uh, never played, just put it away until a few years ago, brought it back, you know. And so I've been working on this, this kind of palindromic concept uh, to, to express my past and my future, and my, my present and my future, in essence, in a four record set that uh, now we have two out. Uh, the next project called Tales from the Skeleton Coast should be released at the end of this year.